Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently, we are in the second module of our deep learning course where we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. So, in this mathematics module, we are discussing about statistics topics and today we are going to discuss about the different types of statistics and how this is important in the case of, let's say, a machine learning, data science or a deep learning use case. So, this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So this is what we have discussed in the previous video. So just about statistics and how this is helpful in a machine learning use case in different parts of a machine learning workflow. So statistics is all about the science of collecting, analyzing and interpreting data. And it provides tools to understand patterns, trends and relationships within the data. So this we have discussed in detail. So it's, we know that it's, it's all about statistics is all about collecting and how you can analyze the data and how you can, uh, you know, draw inferences from the data and so on. And what are all the different tools that it has. And if you think about data understanding, how statistics is used and data pre-processing feature engineering and so on so this is what we have discussed and the next important topic as i said is about these different types of statistical approaches that we have so statistics can be broadly classified into descriptive statistics inferential statistics and prescriptive statistics so these are the three types and inferential statistics is also called as predictive statistics so let's try to understand about each of these uh, three types individually and also uh, understand like how this is going to be uh, you know helpful in a deep learning or a machine learning or a data science scenario and also try to think about a scenario of how this can be helpful in a scientific or, or some experimentations so first let's try to understand about this descriptive statistics so descriptive statistics is all about summarizing and describing the main features of a data set using metrics like mean median and standard deviation so let's try to understand this so what we are going to do with a descriptive statistical approach is that just understand the data so we are not going to come to any conclusion we are not going to say that this is what i uh, kind of like conclude from this data we are not going to say that we are just going to define this data set describe how the data is looking like by just summarizing this so if you have worked on pandas we would have used something like data frame dot describe and that's that's going to give you the mean value median value mode value and so on so it's all about just understanding the data better and then trying to use the tools and measures like you have the central tendency measures like mean median mode and so on and variance values like standard deviation and, and other values right so all these uh, values and, and metrics is going to help you understand the data better to understand the distributions better right and then you have this graphs such as uh, box plot histograms that you can build and the main purpose here as well is to just understand the data better and once you have a clear understanding of this data and task you will be like in a better position to choose a better workflow better machine learning model or a deep learning model so this is why the part of exploratory data analysis is very helpful and that's where your descriptive statistics is plays a crucial role here and as i said it's going to be helpful in the case of data analysis data visualization and so on and even if you think about data pre-processing where we do stuff like uh, normalization and, and uh, standardization right so always the metrics like range median mode so the mean value so these values kind of guide how we normalize or standardize the data say for example normalization is about making sure like all the features are in the similar range so if you have let's say a diabetes prediction model you have uh, let's say an age value and then a blood pressure value so we know that these two columns may not have values in the same range so these two would have values in different ranges right so age may be in let's say uh, the sample that we are taking would be between 20 to 60 or something but blood pressure value is in a different range so we make sure that it doesn't affect the ability for our model to learn from it so we try to put all these features in a similar range so that's where we use normalization and that's uh, that's where like the metrics like range and mean plays a crucial role so this descriptive statistics plays uh, plays a very important role in the case of understanding the data and also guiding how the pre-processing is going to be done using these different central tendency met metrics and other metrics that it provides so this is about descriptive statistics where which is which it is all about understanding the data and then we have inferential statistics which is a very important concept as well so inferential statistics or predictive statistics draws conclusions and make predictions about a population based on a sample using techniques like hypothesis testing and confidence intervals let's try to understand this definition so let's say we are doing a scientific experimentation and most of the experimentations that we do won't be on a population it will always be on a sample there are like several limitations to this so you can't always always do a experimentation on a population because one problem can be like we may not have the you know uh, financial requirements or the resources 
uh, to collect the data for a huge population so that's one problem and let's say if you are uh, testing our uh, medicine or our drug is going to work on a particular disease you can't test it out on all the people right so there has to be a sample that we need to derive from a population and we do this experimentation on this population and based on the study we have to predict how this particular medicine or how this idea is going to work on that population and this is where inferential statistics is like really helpful and it kind of provides us with techniques like this hypothesis testing which tries to you know uh, help, help us understand like how your study is going to behave in a overall population and so on so that plays a crucial role and then we have concepts like confidence intervals and so on so this is all about as i said if you now understand this definition that may make a better sense now so it draws conclusions and make predictions about a population based on a sample so that's about inferential statistics and then we have prescriptive statistics so now we have understood the data and then we have did some uh, experimentation on a, on a sample and try to generalize that for the population right so based on this analysis and this study what you're going to prescribe for a better uh, you know outcome so that's what prescriptive statistics is where we are trying to recommend some action or prescribe some action for our you know better outcome so prescriptive statistics is all about recommending actions based on data analysis using optimization and decision models to guide decision making so let's say that you did enough uh, you know analysis on the data and, and the approach and so on now let's say that you kind of have some constraints and different factors and so on so based on that you train a model to kind of recommend like what can be the best action or best course of action for that particular uh, you know product or idea so that comes under prescriptive statistics it's mainly about that optimization and decision making is it, it's what like uh, pres prescriptive statistics is involved about so let's try to understand this with an uh, with an uh, example scenario so that it, it gives us like a better sense of how this is used in a real world case so I would say that you probably would have used all these things in your use case or in your project that you're working on but it's just that you wouldn't notice that this is what we are doing and this is what it's called in actual so let's say that uh, a data center is working in an e-commerce company like amazon right and uh, he is tasked to analyze the customer data so we would let's say see what's the average spending of a customer is like if we take a particular section of the customer or from a particular country what's their average spend is and then what are all the different times of a year they are like purchasing more and so on so we can do like different kinds of these analysis and so on and all this is basically just descriptive statistics stuff right so that's one example so we are not drawing any conclusion as i said we are just like trying to understand the data summarize the data and just like present what the data is telling us so that's about descriptive statistics if you talk about this inferential statistics so let's say that uh, the company wants to try a different recommendation algorithm right and we try to test that out on a sample so when companies like google and amazon are like introducing something they are not going to straight away implement that so they would take a subset of people subset of their users and give them the access to that particular uh, you know algorithm that they have it can be a recommendation engine or it can be uh, application that they want to test so let's say that we have uh, a feature of uh, let's say a gemini app that google wanted to test. so first it would just give it to a set of users tries to try to see like what their reaction is and based on that based on that they take the decision of what they can do about it right so inferential statistics is also that part it's like how we are going to you know predict about a population based on the study that you do on a sample so as i said in in amazon or an e-commerce company let's say that we want to build a recommendation algorithm and let's say we test it out with thousand users and let's say it's all about uh, changing the price of the products in in different you know different days in, in festive times or so on right and we test this out and make sure that this insight or the customer behavior that we are seeing is going to reflect on that population as well so all those uh, validations and all those tips would basically what we mean by this inferential statistics and, and the tools it's going to provide us and then we have prescriptive statistics so what's the recommended recommended action that we are going to give so let's say that the company want to optimize the costing of the different products that's given in their e-commerce platform so they look at various constraints like uh, you know customer satisfaction and also make sure that the seller is also making some profit there is also profit for the company and so on so there are these different constraints and within this constraint we have to come to an optimized price and so on right so this is where the optimization models as well as like let's say even machine learning models 
whose, which purpose is to let's say predict the price of a product that we can sell so all these comes under prescriptive statistics where we are prescribing a recommended action which is in this case uh, prescribing a perfect price for a product considering different constraints and so on so these are all some of the examples of how this is used in real world again there are several examples that you can think about but this is the overall idea of this so i hope that you got a clear understanding of the different types of statistics and how this is used exactly so that is all from my side for today and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching